I'm Professor Lorena Barba, and it's my pleasure to take part in this Nature webinar with a brief introduction to reproducibility, what it is and why you should care. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, this is a recurrent topic on my timeline. Imagine this scenario. You published a paper in a night a few months ago, and a new member of your team is looking into this work for onboarding or to build from it. In the process, he or she finds a bug in the code that produced the published results. One of the terms of the equation for your mathematical model was entirely omitted. You look it over and over, and there's no question there's a bug. A wave of panic goes through you. Will this alter the results? Will you have to submit a corrigent in the journal? Or worse, will your paper have to be retracted? This is not such a rare occurrence. It happened to us last year, pandemic time. And it was not fun. You collect yourself and talk to your co-authors. After fixing the bug in the code, all the computations need to be rerun and the analysis done again to discover if the conclusions are consistent with your published paper. In our case, the code was maintained in a version control repository. The version of the code corresponding to the paper was archived, and we had also archived what we call reproducibility packages, or repro packs for short. One, of the, one for the execution of all the runs and another for plotting figures in the paper from the raw data. We create and share file bundles with input data, running scripts, plotting scripts, and figures. For the main results in the paper, we share data, plotting scripts, and the figures themselves under a CMI license. These repro packs are deposited in archival services, which give them a citable DOI and can be listed in the paper, and a guarantee of persistent storage. Jeff Perkle interviewed me for the tech blog in uh, 2017, reporting on our focus on automating every step that can be automated. The goal is turning protocols into code and preparing repro packs with resulting code. As an added bonus, the figures we include in the repro packs can be reused by any colleague or reader. We attach an open license to them before the paper is published under a copyright transfer with the journal. For the paper in question, we had deposited the execution repro packs in Zenodo. Uh, it includes the input conditions for every run saved in a machine readable file and scripts to launch each run. To check the impact of the bug, we downloaded our own repro packs to send the runs again to a remote machine. After the runs were finished, we downloaded our own repro packs for the plotting of the results which we had deposited on Figshare. In just minutes, we had a complete set of figures matching those in the paper. And good news, the differences in the results were barely detectable on the plots. Numerically, they were under 1%, and this did not change the conclusions. In the end, we were on pins and needles for just a few days. My graduate student uh, wrote a blog post, which you can find on our website, and we gleefully shared it on Twitter. Think about your latest paper or report. How long do you think it would take you to set up the computations to reproduce all the figures in the publication? We think that without the repro packs, it would have taken us several weeks. For more complex computational workflows, you could lose months trying to retrace your steps. Stories like this not always have a happy ending. A news feature published in Nature in October 2020 highlights the failings of computational science in regards to our use of software. As the article mentions, coding problems can sometimes cause a great deal of trouble and have forced some scientists to retract their papers. It tells the story of a structural biology group at Scripps Institute, led by Jeffrey Chang. In 2006, the team realized that a code they were using had a sign error, which reversed two columns of data, causing their protein structures to be completely wrong. This was the nightmare scenario. Chang and co-authors were forced to retract five papers published in Science of Molecular Biology and the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science between the years 2001 and 2005. And it continues to happen. A paper in the Journal of Clinical Oncology published in 2016 contained analysis mislabeled the data in a column affecting how a substantial set of clinical results from 1990 to 2008 entered into the conclusions. Some of the conclusions were incorrect and the paper had to be retracted. The principal investigator said that a doctoral student made a coding error but gave no specifics. You could see that this is just bad luck, that the PI couldn't have avoided this, mistakes happen, etc. But the fact is that some engineering practices are available to us for ensuring quality of research software, and they could have prevented this. These practices are part of what we call reproducible research and include version control, code reviews, code testing, study replication, and others. 
Another classic example, two economists at Harvard University, Carmen Reinhardt and Kenneth Rogoff, published a study in 2010 suggesting a negative effect on growth from the national debt. The main conclusion was that between uh, 45, 1945 and 2009, average annual growth was minus 0.1% in countries with episodes of gross government debt equal to 90% or more of GDP. The Reinhardt study came out just after Greece fell into crisis, and it was widely cited by fiscal conservative politicians to call for austerity measures. Nobel Prize winner Paul Krugman called it the most influential economic analysis on research of recent years. Critics of the article rightly pointed out that it could be a case of reverse causation. That is, it is not the debt that impacts negatively on growth, but that low growth leads to high debt. Maybe, but soon a more serious problem appeared. Other researchers trying to replicate this study with similar data could not reach similar findings. University of Massachusetts graduate student Thomas Herndon started a replication exercise for his econometrics term paper. After repeated failures to replicate, he approached the authors to ask for their data and their spreadsheet, which they provided. Herndon found that five out of 20 countries had been left out of the calculation due to a formula in the spreadsheet. A spreadsheet error was not the only problem in this study. Some questionable statistics, but in other fields, Microsoft Excel has wrecked havoc uh, has, as, uh, as well. In, econo in genomics, for example, researchers estimate that one out of five publications using Excel for gene lists contain errors. The problem here is that Excel automatically converts some gene names to other formats, like dates or floating point numbers. The gene SEPT2 for Septin2 gets converted to the date 2 of September, and the identifier 2310009E13 gets converted to a floating point number order 10 to the 13th power. In general, one should really try to avoid spreadsheets for serious data analysis and move to programmatic data manipulation using a friendly language like Python or R. In the last five or six years, reproducibility has really hit the mainstream. In 2015, the Subcommittee on Replicability in Science of the Advisory Committee to the NSF Directorate for Social, Behavioral and Economic Sciences published a Perspectives on Robust and Reliable Science report and it adopts a clear definition for reproducibility and replicability, where reproducibility refers to the ability of a researcher to duplicate results of a prior study using the same materials as were used by the original investigator. And new evidence is provided by new experimentation defined in the NSF report as replicability. The report also states that reproducibility is the minimum necessary condition for finding to be believable and informative. Institutes of Health have, has a broad effort with a whole section of their website dedicated to the issue focused on preclinical research. NIH is the largest U.S. government funding of research and their commitment to reproducibility is vigorous and visible. They have organized numerous events to raise community awareness, workshops and meetings with professional societies and publishers. And um, in the, if you look at the section uh, on their website on meetings and workshops, you'll find multiple events every year focusing on reproducibility, open science and related topics. Nature has an ongoing collection of articles and editorials on reproducibility. Their statement reads that journals, scientists, institutions and funders all have a part in tackling reproducibility. Nature has taken substantive uh, steps to improve the transparency and robustness of what they publish, they uh, state, and to promote awareness within the scientific community. And in a study mandated by Congress in January 2017 and commissioned by the NSF to the National Academies of Science, Engineering and Medicine, 15 experts, uh, among them was myself, worked for 18 months to produce a report released two years ago titled Reproducibility and Replicability in Science. It defined reproducibility as obtaining consistent results using the same input data, computational steps, methods, and conditions of analysis. Which may sound straightforward, but it definitely is not. The National Academy's report on reproducibility included recommendations for various stakeholders, researchers, journalists, and conferences, uh, professional societies, academic institutions, and national labs, and funding agencies. 
a recommendation that can be adopted without imposing large investments or deep changes, targets the grant application process. Researchers should discuss in their proposal how they will assess uncertainties and address reliability, and funding agencies on their part can have immediate impact by incorporating reproducibility concerns in the merit review criteria. If agencies heed the recommendation, we see shifting science policy that embraces reproducibility and transparency of research. And thus, I would like to end with one of my favorite quotes from David Donohoe, a pioneer of the reproducibility the reproducible research movement. If everyone on a research team knows that what they do is going to someday be published for reproducibility, they'll behave differently from day one. Thanks for having me.